Good evening, everyone. I want to thank you for joining me tonight. My name is Kelly Wentworth. I am a Stamping Up demonstrator here in Kennebunk, Maine. If you are joining me tonight, make sure you say hello so I know that you're there. If you're new to my channel, let me know that as well so we can welcome you. Hey, Karen, you are first tonight, girl. Good to see you. Hi, Sharon. How are you ladies doing? On this beautiful evening. What a beautiful day. Although a little cloudy this afternoon, it was beautiful later this afternoon. The sun came out. Thank you for sharing, Sharon. I'm feeling good, Sharon. Thank you for asking. I um yeah, I'm feeling I'm feeling pretty good. I I get a little tired, so I don't think my energy is quite back to where it should be. Um but you know, they say that it does take time, and so I'm, I'm being patient with that and trying not to overdo. So, um, but yeah, overall, I'm feeling, I'm feeling good. Much better, thank you. Oh, you just got back from Connecticut, Karen. Well, I'm so happy that you popped on. I appreciate that. Hey, June. Thank you for joining. <clears throat> okay, so looks like everything's good. I can see myself in the feed, so that's great. So I want to jump right in and get started. Um, just a couple of um, business points here. I just want to remind everybody that we are running a special from May 4th to June 14th. And with um, a $250 order, albeit yourself or with friends, you are going to get $25 extra hostess dollars uh, for free product in uh, with your order and that's from stamping up so it's a nice little added bonus if you save up your money and do bigger orders or if you get a couple of friends to give you orders this is this really makes a difference I used it in my last order and it does definitely make a difference so just a reminder on that and I also wanted to remind you that we are having our sign on promotion where typically you sign on for $99 and you get $125 worth of free product. Um, but right now for the month of May through the 31st, you sign on for $99 and you will get $155 in free product. Plus you're gonna get a business literature pack that's valued at about $50. You're gonna get a free paper pumpkin kit and you're gonna get free shipping on all of that. So it's a great time to join Stamping Up if that's something that you're interested in. If you wanna be a discount shopper and just get discounts on your orders, it's a great way uh, to do that also. So those are the two things I wanted to remind you of. And I wanted to do, let me see. We gotta do the drawing for last week. Last week, I said I was giving away this beautiful, stylish scroll embossing folder. I use this um, a lot at Christmas time. It's beautiful. Um, it, it really can change. Uh, embossing folders are great. They can change up um, the look of your project uh, with just putting this through um, through your through your embossing machine. And the winner for this 
is Karen G. Karen, you won two weeks in a row and I still have your pokey tools. So I will be dropping these off to you it down because I know you just live down the street. So I'll be dropping these off to you uh, this week, I promise. So congratulations, Karen. Do you have this folder? I hope not. It's a beautiful folder. You are going to love it. Wow, congratulations. So I will be dropping these off to you later this week, I promise. Yes! And here's your pokey tool. I've got them all together. Promise to get that to you later this week. Yeah, it's a beautiful folder. I, I liked it at Christmas time, but you can use it, really. It's a it's one of those versatile folders. You can use it pretty much on anything. Okay, so let's get started. I didn't even say hello. Hey! Hey! Hi! I meant to flip the camera and forgot to do that. I was getting right down to business, and I'm like, wait a minute. Thank you, ladies, for joining me. I really appreciate it and thank you for sharing my video if you do share just comment that you shared and um, this week I am going to be giving away the projects that I am making tonight um, and I'm going to tell you that in my humble opinion the set that I am using tonight in my opinion is I think bar none the most beautiful set that Stamping Up has come ever come out with or since my time in Stamping Up and I've been around Stamping Up for a long time and the projects the the pieces that go with the suite I think the the paper that I'm going to be using tonight and I'm going to be sharing with showing you tonight is in my opinion the best paper they have ever come out with it is stunning stunning so um, let's get going I want to show you what we're going to be making tonight. You are very welcome. Very welcome. Okay. So tonight, I am going to be sharing the inspiration that's on our annual catalog. Hi, Diane. Thank you for joining. We're just getting started. So the projects that I'm going to be making tonight are from this set, which is on the cover of our catalog, and it's on page 96 and 97 of our annual catalog, and it's called Expressions in Ink, and the stamp set is called Artistically Inked, and I'm telling you, this set is stunning. It's beautiful. And you get the stamp set and the dies. And let me show you that. So here's the stamp set. Here are the dies. And you can see, look at this big, and I did make a card with this tonight. So I'm going to be able to show you that. So many options with this because you can cut this out in any color. You can use the, um, the blending brushes, you can use daubers, um, you can, um, so many options, so many options. It's, it's huge, it's big, it's beautiful, it makes a great focal point. Uh, and then here is the set, uh, the stamp set. Now this set is a distinctive stamp set. And, hey Cynthia! Thank you for joining. You have this set? I have to tell you, I honestly believe this is probably, this is definitely going to be my favorite set in the whole catalog. I already know that. But I honestly believe it's 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 top. It's the probably one of the best that they've ever come out with. And I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to show you when, when I d demonstrate the, the stamps. This is a distinctive stamp set. And what does that mean? It, for those of you who may not know, it means it has highs and lows when you stamp. 
So you are going to have, you know, the darker colors, um, pieces of the, of the stamp. You're going to have lighter sections of the stamp. And it's actually made to do that. So it looks like a watercolor effect, but it also looks 3D-ish. Um, and it really does just give a distinctive look to it. Um, and it's absolutely beautiful. And then I love, if you if you ever had a stamp set that has a blob type, we call it a blob, but I'm not sure what you want to call that. What a beautiful stamp this is. And um, I did use it on one of the projects tonight, but I can't wait. You could use this for a background stamp. You could just you, do different colors and do it on your on your cardstock and just make a, um, a background and make it look like um, DSP. It's it's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. Um, I played with it. I made some cards. I really wanted to make more cards. I ran out of time, but I am going to be using this more. Um, again, you may see me do another class with it, but I absolutely love it. And um, and we'll get started. And I'll sh and I'll show you, give you some hints on um, on using it. Do you like it, Cynthia? Also part of this set is the Expressions in Ink em, 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 ephemera, ephemera Pack. And what this is, is you're going to get five sheets, five gold sheets. And on each sheet, there are ten elements. 10 die cuts for you to use. Some of them are frames, which I'm going to use one tonight. Some of them are leaves. So you're getting 50 elements, 50 different die cuts, gold foil in this pack. And I think, let me see, I think this is only, let me see if it, um, $7 for this pack. That's cheap. So this is part of the suite. And, but what I think is the most beautiful paper I have ever seen is this paper. So, I've already, as you can see, I've already made cards with it. But look at this. Look at this paper. So, the designer who made this paper used alcohol in their design so the, this is alcohol based dsp okay so a lot of us have you you may have seen me i've done classes where i've used alcohol to try to get the effects of of my project this already has it in it and it is beautiful and this is called specialty paper and the reason for that is there's foil on the other side of each piece do you see it? Is it showing up all right on the camera? Yeah, $75 for the whole set, which I think is really good. Um, look at that. Isn't that pretty? Now, a piece like this, what I did with mine is I cut it down this way, okay? And you'll see it on the project I'm, I'm going to show you I've made. So I cut it this way, and then I cut four and four so four and eight so four inch um strips and that way you can use it as card bases honestly this paper is so stunning you really don't even need to do a lot with it to be honest with you because the paper really makes the projects so um so that's that one and then that's the foil and then look at this one with the gold veining in it look at the look at the different colors and then that's that side. Look at the vibrant colors. Oh my God, this paper's stunning. There's that. Same one as that. Look at this one. I used this tonight, so you'll see this. And again, what I did was I cut it this way, and then I did it this way. So you can make card bases. And I, and I did that on one of my cards, so you'll get to see it. And then look at this one. How beautiful is that paper? Do you guys think this paper is stunning? I, I think it's stunning. And then look at this one with the gold foil in it. 
again, you could cut it this way and then do your pieces and then do your fill-ins. And then that is really pretty. All the different, like the green tones in there. Look at that watercolor look and that alcohol look. You've seen that one. And then there's this. And then on this one, can you see the, the foil is in the dots? There's do like subtle dots in the center of the flowers and then on the outside of the flowers. And then this looks like, for those of you who, who saw my class, the, um, oh yes, all of our DSP is double-sided, Karen. So these are all double-sided. So um, this looks like the polished stone effect. Remember, for those of you who watched my class when I did the polished stone, that's what this looks like. And the paper's already done the work for you. And then there's this one with the foil. And then look at that. Look at this gold foil. Oh my goodness. Isn't this paper, I think this paper is just stunning. Probably my favorite ever. So, let me put this aside and we'll get started. I really wished I had more time to play to show you some more samples other than the ones that I made for tonight, but I will definitely be playing with this um, a lot because I really love it. Okay, so let's get started. First card. So not very difficult, but I'm going to show you a technique I did on this one. Yeah, Karen, I think I, I think you're right. I mean, when you have paper that's this gorgeous, you really struggle with what sides to use. I'm already seeing that with the projects I already made. But, um, yeah. And, I, and the other thing I'm worried about is I think it's going to be so popular, if it hasn't been already, that I think it, it there's a chance it could go on back order. So I'm thinking of getting another pack. Because I think once people start seeing everybody making cards with it, I think it's going to go like hotcakes. That's just my humble opinion on that. I don't know either, Sharon. I mean, like I said, I, I've been around stamping up for years and years and, you know, almost 20 years at least. And uh, this paper is just stunning. Okay, so what I'm going to show you. So what I did on this one, so I took, remember I showed you the paper um, and I told you how I cut it crossways and then in, uh, in four inches. So it comes out and it looks like this. Okay, so then I cut it down to four by five and a quarter. So it, it's longer. So you just, it's already at the four. So then I just cut it at the five and a quarter to be the base. And I used one half on that side. And then on this side, what I did, I wanted to demonstrate. Let me put this over and show you what I did. So, so this is two by five and a quarter and then I took a piece of pear pizzazz which is also one of the colors in this DSP and I did it two by five and a, and a quarter and what we're going to do is we're going to stamp and we're going to make this background using that blob stamp and I'm going to tell you that stamp there's no it's very um, forgiving there's no um, you know, you can't make a mistake with it, I guess is what I want to say. So let me get my... Okay. Let me get my pear pizzazz. So this is going to be tone on tone. And then this is the blob what I call the blob. What's a good name for that? I don't know. But it looks just like an alcohol stamp design. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to ink up, we're going to do tone on tone, and we're going to go, and you can turn it around. way now that one I did full strength and this one I did um, I stamped off which one do you like better do you like the lighter one or do you like the darker one I could do, you like the full strength, Karen? Because I, I was just thinking I can do one of each and then you can decide which one, which one you like better. Okay, we're going to go with the darker one. That's the consensus. Okay, perfect. So then I have shaded spruce, which is also one of the colors of the greens in this DSP. So you always want to match the paper You probably all know this, but on the paper it, it tells you the colors that come in. So this paper has Evening Evergreen, Just Jade, Magenta Madness, Mint Macaron, Pale Papaya, Pear Pizzazz, Polished Pink, Shaded Spruce, and Whisper White, or Basic White. Okay? So if you always want to look at the colors in your DSP when you're creating your project, so they'll match. Okay, so now I'm going to bring in, and and look, I have to I have to cover this up with foil. Isn't that a shame? <laughs> but that's okay. There's other projects that I can make, other cards, and you want to leave a little bit of border. And then we're going to Karen, close your eyes. <laughs> All right, this one I need to move over a little bit. Hold on. All right. Now, isn't that just cool? I mean, just to kind of match that up with the greens. And I'm done with the pear pizzazz so I can close that up before I get my fingers in it. And then... Oh, actually, I need it for the sentiment. So the sentiment scrap is like one inch and what we're going to do is we're going to do, use the blog, what I did is use the blog and I am going to stamp off on this one only because I'm going to be having some words on it. So I want to make sure the words show up. Hang on. There we go. Which it, I think they will anyways because it's shaded spruce and that's a darker green. <laughs> and 
it is hard when you have beautiful paper because you're always looking at you go to make a pro I, I will speak for myself I go to make a project and I have it in my mind what I want to do and then I, I go to flip the paper over and I'm like oh wait a minute do I really want to do that <laughs> okay so now I'm going to bring in the shaded spruce to match the card base to do the sentiment Shaded Spruce was my favorite green, especially for Christmas. And isn't that a beautiful font? Nice, big, bold font. And then I used a scrap of the shaded spruce to put this on. And we don't really need it that long, so I'm going to trim it down. And go ahead and put that on. I just love these greens. Trim that down. And then I'm going to pop this up on dimensionals. And I was, you know, I wasn't really sure where I wanted to put it. Oh, let me fix this one. No. But I thought like over here, so it doesn't cover up. I, I just think this is just so pretty. Hey, Melanie. Good to see you. Thank you for joining. So I'm just going to kind of align that to the DS to the paper on the top there. And I thought it would be I liked the gilded gems. I thought the gilded gems so if you look at these, just thought they looked really pretty. So I was happy that these carried over. Hang on. Looks like my gum. Here it comes. So, for those of you who have the pokey tool, which I think is like a must have, when your your gum at the bottom, your whatever you call it, gets old, you just peel it off and then just twist your cap in the and the and it automatically can you see it it pops right back up again so and of course I got it in my finger now so I'm gonna go ahead and put that up there and we'll put one over there and we'll put another one I kind of went down there. And then I'm 
because we have matching ribbon, which I showed you guys, this open weave ribbon is so easy to work with. So I'm just going to make a bow to put on the corner. And then you kind of fiddle with it, get it the way you like it. And get out my glue dots here. Oh, let me tighten that up. Hang on, there we go. There. Well, what do you think? Do you like it? So this is the dark, this is the light. What do you think? I absolutely loved the greens. I mean, I, I really had a hard time when I started making my cards, like which one, what colors to use, but yeah but I I just thought the greens really popped and again you don't have to do a lot I didn't really do a lot to this card I just kind of did the made this over here and um, and then a tag and a bow and some embellishments and and it was done and I'm like it really didn't need more than that so I hope you like it we'll go on to card number two. Oh, this was so pretty so, so pretty. You all seem to like the dark. Perfect. I'm glad I, I, I changed it up a little bit. So the next one, I'm just cleaning up here. What do you think? Isn't this pretty? And I'm gonna, again, the paper does all the work, but I'm gonna show you A little bit about these stamps okay so let me get ready here and then on the inside I just used a strip from cutting down the that paper when you cut it down you have strips left so don't throw those away and then this is the foil side. So can you see the foiling? What is it that you want to see? Let me go back. Did I miss something? Melanie, what did you want to see? Polish pink and this is four and a quarter by eleven scored at five and a half okay and then I use that beautiful DSP and I cut it the way that I shared it with you this is the back side and I love the way it has the little bit of white in the center so I was trying to figure out how best to do this um, but we use we're gonna um, use the ephemera pack for the border so I'm going to show you that um, and this is four by five and a quarter so I can go ahead and can glue that down and I don't think it really matters which way it's I oh my god I just think this is so pretty Making alcohol inked paper. I'm 
I believe I did, hang on, I just dropped something. I believe I did do a class on that, but it was a while ago. But well, we can always do another one. Okay, so I want to I want to share something with you about these stamps because I told you that they're distinctive and there's highs and lows in them. And I want to share something that I want you to be if you get if you have this set or if you're going to get this set or if you have other distinctive sets. I just want to share some insight about distinctive stamps in case you didn't know. Okay. For example, so the bigger one, this one right here, gorgeous. I want to show you the difference in these stamps, okay? So this one was my first one, okay? And, it, and although it has highs and lows in it, do you see how much darker it is? And it really is supposed to be more of um, like this. So what I did was, and I keep a spoon, and you can use a spoon, you can use a bone folder, um, and let me see, let me use, all right, let me demonstrate it on, let me demonstrate it on a different color that I haven't already done. So I want to show you what I did. So let me grab... I'm going to grab my granny apple green because that will really show up. So when I did this one, I just opened up my stamp pad. And because this is a new stamp pad, Polish Pink, we just got them. Um, it was full of ink because it's new, right? And as you use your stamp set, as you use your inks, they, the ink eventually will go down. It takes a long time, but it does go down. Um, but what I did... To get this effect is I took my spoon, okay, and I did this. And I just lightly grazed over. Oh, I wanted to show the difference. Oh, shoot. Hang on. Let me try a different one now because I've already messed that up. All right. Let me do, let me do magenta madness because I haven't done it with this one. This one will show up too. So let me show you what I mean. So I'm going to take the big flower, okay, and I'm going to stamp, I'm going to ink it up. You don't need to press hard. And that's not bad. That came out pretty good. But there, but there are some darker spots. Let's see what happens when you take the spoon and you just kind of brush some of the ink to the back. Okay, let's just see the difference. And I just want to show you to what to watch for with distinctive sets, okay? Because I was amazed. Let me clean this off so I can show you fresh. Okay, now we're going to stamp it up again. See if this works. Now, a little bit lighter. Actually, that one looks almost the same. When I did the polished pink, by brushing the, let me try a different color. Let me see, what would be a good color? How about, how about Poppy Parade? I just want to show you that there is a difference. Hang on. Let me try one more color. So this is Poppy Parade. Oh, that one didn't even... Well, my demo is not working the way it did. There we go. I didn't press hard enough. Okay. So now let's take the spoon. 
me get a wipey. And then we'll, we'll trim it down, the color, and see if it makes a difference. Another scrap. Let me clean it. I just want you to see the difference. All right, let's do. And you can see, you can almost see, can you see the ink on this moving back? Can you see that there's less ink and it's darker on the edge? The polished pink is gorgeous, Melanie. It really, really is. All right, now let me, let's try that and see if that makes a difference. So, what did I do? Okay. Oh my goodness, I'm not pressing hard enough. Can you see the difference? I know I didn't press hard enough on that other one, but the point I'm trying to make is if you if it if it's too dark, there you go. Can you see? See how much darker this one is right here? And then look at that one. Look at this one. So it shows the highs and lows more. So what I, my point is, if you're making a project with a distinctive set, you may need to scrape your ink pad is all I'm saying. Yeah, I think I am, Melanie. I'm going to have all kinds of flowers made. <laughs> but I just wanted to share because I realized it when I was making... Um, a card and I'm like oh my goodness that's darker and then I did that and it came out better so a big difference on these ones you can see it Okay, let's get back to business. So, <clears throat> we don't need that. Let me move that over there. So what we're going to do is we're gonna take the polished pink and we're gonna take, and I'm gonna tell you, this pale papaya, I wasn't, that was the only one I was questioning in my mind. It's really, really beautiful. So we are going to make and I guess you call them roses, maybe? And this is the stamp. Isn't that cool? So we're going to do... Look at, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? You definitely could use second generation, Diane. Absolutely. Um, now we'll use the pale papaya. But you also want to make sure you get the color effect. So let me just do... Let me do a second generation and show you... That's second generation. So I know pale papaya is a light color. Let me do second generation in the polished pink. So 
So that's the difference. So you want to get the color vibrancy, but you just don't want it to be mucked up so you're not seeing the highs and the lows. That's that's the point of, of what I'm trying to share with you. So if you look at my card, you know, you want to do the high, you want to be able to see the highs and the lows because that's what makes this stamp set so beautiful. Okay, does that help? I hope it, I hope that helps. And then you would cut these out with the die and I've already done that on TV. Yes, here we go. So here's the and then I did the same with the leaves. And again, I want to show you when I was playing. Do you see the difference? Here's the darker one. And then here it is after I wiped it, some of the ink away. Do you see that? So there is a difference. It's it's and it's all in what you want. It's all in what you're trying to get. And then I did the leaves in the pear pizzazz. Okay, and then I cut those out. So instead of doing that, I've already done that just so I can show you. Okay, so we are going to get the ephemera pack out. Again, where did I put that? Over here. I cannot believe that you get 50 of these. So you, there's all different... There's this one. That's a thicker one. But I want the same one. And these are like layered, just so you know. So let's take out. This one. Here. And these are fillers that come out. So you see how, and you can leave them in or take them out. I prefer to take them out. You might want to use these for something else. So you may want to keep those. But this is like a foiled double frame. And what I did was I just kind of put it down and said, okay, I kind of want it around like this. But I want to do my greeting and I'm doing the hello. And that's in this set right here. And I'm doing it in the polished pink. So I kind of just laid that there to give me an idea of where to stamp. Okay, there we go. That's how I did it. Okay, and then and to put this down, I used liquid glue. And you just have to be careful. Because you just want to, and you can kind of dab it on the lines. And it doesn't need to be through the whole thing. Thank you, Melanie. I'm glad you like it. I'm telling you, this set, I think it's going to be my favorite set in the whole book. And I look forward to playing with it some more. Okay, so I just put some dabs of glue 
and then you're just going to kind of place it where you think you want it. And why I like to use the liquid glue is it's, it gives you it's, it gives you a few seconds to kind of decide if that's where you want it or move it around. Okay. And then I really light so on this one I used this on my card this was the one I used so I had the leaves and then it had the little berries or whatever you want to call that I thought that was really pretty so I'll keep it the same and then on my roses we're going to pop those up on dimensionals but I really do like the pale papaya it's it's really pretty and it goes with a lot of things and then you just kind of place them where you think you want them you know like that thank you Sharon Hi, Lori. How are you? Thank you for stopping by. I hope you're well. And let's see, we'll do it like maybe like that. And then for the leaves, all I did was put a little bit, oops, a little bit of glue on the bottom of the leaf and then kind of placed it underneath. I know, Lori, I'm paying attention. My red socks are right up there, you know. And then on this one, I just kind of stuck that hang on, under there. So I just put a little bit of glue. And the Bruins won last night in playoffs, and, they're, and so now they're one and one. What do you think? Now, in, hang on, I want to show you. In this ephemera kit, you also get 100 iridescent embellishments. And I thought they would be so pretty on this card. So if you see, see there, there, and there, they're iridescent. Aren't those pretty? Okay, so. one there and these come in that pack what do you think isn't that pretty now on the inside of this I think I showed you I used a strip of the paper so I want to just add my white I think my glue is almost out here. There we go. So we're gonna put this here. Like 
of that. And then again, I have a strip from here that when you cut that paper the way I shared with you, you have little strips left. So don't throw those out if you do that. If you cut it the same way. And I'm not going to put anything on the inside because I'm giving these cards away for people who share. That's going to be the drawing. So what do you think? Isn't that pretty? See how much darker that one is than this one? There, I... It, it's they're iridescent is what it looks like so I'm not really sure they come in the um, ephemera pack and you get a hundred of them along with those gold foil sheets so to me I mean can you they do look iridescent aren't those pretty and I don't know if they're faceted what do you think yes they are faceted they seem they are faceted. I mean, to get those faceted gems plus 50 of those gold elements in a pack for $7, I think that's a really good deal in this suite. So, okay, I have one more card if you guys want to hang in there. I do have one more that I think is really pretty. And I wanted to share, what a mess I've made. Oh my goodness. So this is using that big flower die. And I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but I did uh, wink a stellar on the flower. And I did wink a stellar on the best wishes, but I'm not sure it's showing up very well on the, on the camera. So what I used on this one, let me get, oh my God, I made a mess here. Hold on. Okay. So I used um, Whisper White, eight and a half by five and a half, scored at four and a quarter. Okay. And I used Basic Black, four by five and a quarter and I embossed it with the new pretty flowers embossing folder isn't that pretty this is new in the annual catalog and I already did that for you so we will add that to the white I wanted to show you, um, you know, that big, big white flower or that big flower, which you can do like in any, in any color. It doesn't have to be. So this is what it looks like when you cut it out, when you die cut it. This is the die. And you can do these, like I said, in any color. You could sponge over them. You could use your um blending brushes and add color to the flower. I mean, there's so many different ways to use it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put Wink of Stella Always shake it and make sure you can see it coming. I don't know. This might I'm not sure if this is an old one. And I'm just going to gently go over the flower. I just thought it would give it a little bit of something. And then once I did it, I said, oh, I'm going to add it to the sentiment as well. Give it a little bit of sparkle on the black, which I think just makes it pop. 
but this is a gorgeous die cut. And it doesn't take that long to brush over it. Okay, we'll just stick that aside and let it dry. And then I used the rectangle, stitched rectangles, and I used this one right here for the sentiment. And we're going to use black memento. And we're going to use the Best Wishes stamp. So again, this isn't a difficult card to make. I think it's one of those simple but elegant. And, oh crap, hang on. I knew I forgot something. I want to put, we're going to use the ribbon and this is the glittered or organdy ribbon that carried over I knew I was forgetting something hang on we can fix it all right so we're just going to put a piece of this like that. See if I can fix that there. Something we can fix. There you go. And I will put. Hmm, there's my. There we go. Just used a glue dot to pop that down. Okay. And we are going to use the Wink of Stella on the, I added it also. This one's almost gone, I think. This one's still a little wet. Give it a little bit of, there you go. Okay, so what we're going to do on the flower is we're going to add some glue to the back. And we're, again, just kind of do drops sporadically on the back to hold it down. Now you could cut this using our adhesive sheets that we sell, which make it like a sticker. I have them and I just I just honestly I just don't ever use them <laughs> but they work and they work great if you can remember to use them for things like this they work really well for your detail dies for something like this it would work really really great okay Yeah, I love this ribbon too, Sharon. I was very, very, very happy it carried over because I used it a lot last year and I have another new um, bolt of ribbon not even open, so that made my heart happy. And it's just so pretty, especially when you're creating black and white cards. Okay. Now, you would do this, I would definitely use like your adhesive um, sheets. 
sheet because that works really, really well. Okay. And then just kind of position it where you want it. Pop it down. Give it a chance to adhere. I don't know if you can see the shimmer on it. It's probably not coming out in the camera very well. And then I popped up the sentiment on with um dimensionals and then what I did for my bow on this one I didn't make a bow I made a knot so what I did so you put your strip down and then you just take your ribbon bring it just make a knot Oh, I have my ribbon scissors hang on. And I made just a um, a knot which I thought was a nice little accent where the sentiment is small over here. And then you can just add it over there. Thank you, Karen. Watch your inbox, watch your mailbox for your goodies. Thanks again for stopping by. I agree, Melanie. I love black and white. I think they're, they make just such beautiful cards. Can you see the Wink of Stellar on that? You probably can't in the camera. So what do you think of tonight's projects? I hope you like them. I had so much fun making these cards. I just think they're so beautiful. Not even enough room in the camera here to show them all, but hopefully you get the idea. I absolutely love this stamp set and this suite, and I think you will too. I honestly think it's going to be the favorite of this catalog, and um, and I think it's one of the best that Stamping Up has ever done. What do you think? I hope you guys enjoyed them. I enjoyed making them. I had so much fun playing with this set. And again, I think it's going to be a favorite. I hope you have a great rest of the week. And thank you so much for stopping by and spending some time with me. It melts my heart. Um, I appreciate all of you. Have a great rest of the week. Take care. Bye-bye.